Now then, this is a, an Emerson diverter and as you can see here we're on channel 2 yep yeah uh, but recently an inherent fault has been has raised its head and I looked on Navitron and apparently yeah it's quite a common fault which is a bit disappointing but just goes to show that these are better okay and this one also has the my energy eddy also has a setting where you can do put put a delay in there so that then this eddy actually piggybacks the emerson yeah so so the emerson's the primary basically because that's the ones that's wired up that way and then the eddy soaks up any surplus okay and of course there is no surplus at the moment but as soon as the sun comes out there will be surplus beyond what the Emerson channel 2 can cope with there we go see so the eddy is soaking up 1.5 kilowatts and the um, Emerson is 2.1 so there you go and there's no export because the eddy is soaking it up which is great okay anyway so we got this inherent fault with an Emerson and it was on channel 1 which is the immersion heater so I'm just going to take the cover off and I'll show you what the problem was okay see where that red cable is there was a connector like this one and it burnt out and here's the remnants of that disaster actually it wasn't a great disaster because nothing set actually set on fire even though you can see that these have been uh, charring quite badly anyway let's crack on yeah. And so what I've done is I've taken some fairly thick mains cable and it is and I'm I'm guessing it's like I don't know three mil cross sectional area something like that maybe even more it's definitely bigger than the uh, 2.5 twin and earth okay and I've soldered it and I don't know whether we're better zoom in enough We can and I've soldered it onto the pins now the pins as I will show here are really small this is channel 2 let's just remove that and I don't know whether you'll be able to see but can you see how minute those pins are and I'm going to show you the the charred remains so those wires soldered onto there are a lot better than just some spring clamps that just touch onto those pins yeah so if you get this problem solder straight on the pins yeah and then you're reducing an area of resistance and possible failure channel 2 is 2 kilowatt so it won't be drawing as much current but 2 kilowatt at 240 volts is 8 amps and 8 amps is quite a lot to go through a little pin like that yeah. so and on the channel 1 which was the immersion heater which is 3 kilowatts we're talking about 12 amps so no wonder the poor little thing ended up burning out mind you it's taken a few years but um, let's have a look at the um, the disaster area but prior before that with these I think that's probably good enough I've got some little bits of insulation and I pop that round the neutral yeah 
and I'm only doing the neutral so it means that the live has got good cooling round it yeah we don't want the live and the neutral to be touching each other obviously or the live or the neutral and earth however they are similar but we don't want to go into great detail about that but basically we want as much cooling round that as possible so there you go you've got to get a reasonable size soldering iron and just be careful how much heat you're transferring into the circuit board in the back there I'll just show you the charred remains then so that's the outer casing and the three pins pop up there from the circuit board into there see how it's melted and that's part of the plug and that's the remainder of the plug and that there is one of the connectors and can you see all it has is that spring clip so the, that little pin whoops I just knocked the camera goes in there but of course it's not as fat as that it's a lot smaller yeah. and this one here has actually come apart and there's one more in there which was the earth obviously so that one's fairly intact but can you see how really is not a great deal holding it together or gripping onto the um, connector imagine this is the pin yeah there's only a small surface area touching just between that curve and that curve there and obviously it got very hot anyway so if you've got a, an Emerson and one of the channels stops working like for instance the immersion heater then there's several things you need to do one is check the resistance of the immersion heater itself and it should be about 19 ohms for a 3 kilowatt immersion heater at 240 volts and I think the maths goes like this 3 kilowatt is 12 amps 12s into 240 goes something like 19 let's just get the calculator in there so we have 3 kilowatt there's 4 amps to the kilowatt at 240 volts yeah so that's fine and then we get so that's theoretically 12 amps so we got 240 divided by 12 equals 20 uh, 20 ohms 19 ohms 20 ohms that sort of thing yeah and if it is uh, less than that then the uh, at 240 volts you know you've got maybe a faulty immersion heater but you know that's another thing to be aware of that you know a fault in your immersion heater or your heating element whatever can cause a fault in your diverter and here's an immersion heater just as an example yeah and we're just going to stand it up and oh that's handy there we go so here we go there we go 19.7 19.8 that's close enough hopefully that all makes sense and I'll just piece together these uh, couple of video clips it's purely in for information if you find this um, informative or interesting or uh, entertaining please do all the business with the buttons 
and uh, I will catch up with you soon. Cheers for now.